Hello everybody, today on the channel we're talking instability. No, we're not psychoanalyzing me, we're talking atmospheric instability. We're talking CAPE, we're talking SP CAPE, ML CAPE. What do you use? When do you use what? We're about to find out right after this. Hello, hello, hello there. It is so good to see you. It is so good to be talking weather today. Today, our topic, well, it's instability. We talked about it in the preview, in that teaser bit right there. We're gonna get right to that. First off though, if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. Trust me, you wanna do that because this video, this is just a small piece of everything we do. We talk weather all the time, we teach, we storm chase, live storm chasing coming this spring. It's all going to be great. So hit that subscribe button, enable notifications, like this video, comment, all the things. And so, well, I guess that means now that I've got my shameless intro done, let's get started. Now, first off, let's talk about instability for just a second, instability. It's when the atmosphere is warmer at the surface, cold or aloft, there's a lot more on that. You can check out the video on the card. I just popped up to get the basics of instability. I'm gonna assume from this point on, you know what instability is. So how do we measure instability? Well, one of the most common and you often used uh, components, indexes, is called CAPE. Convective Available Potential Energy. It's measured in joules per kilogram. Literally sounds like energy, right? Well, that's exactly what it is. Instability is energy. It's how much energy storms have to do what they do. So there's several different types of CAPE though. This is an important thing to know. There's SB CAPE, which is the measurement of air parcels from the surface. ML CAPE, it's a, uh, more of an average. MU CAPE, it's the most unstable. You have zero to three kilometer CAPE and then well, we have other measures of instability that aren't just CAPE. We're gonna get to all of those, talk about their positives and minuses. Let's go. So the first index we're gonna talk about is SB CAPE. This doesn't stand for sexy CAPE, although the numbers are oftentimes really sexy, really high, make storm chasers really excited when you get 6,000 SB CAPE, let me tell you. But it's called surface base CAPE. That's because this measurement of instability takes the surface parcel and measures how unstable this surface parcel would be if it was lifted all the way up to the equilibrium level. If you have questions about the equilibrium level, this video is gonna help you out a lot. But what are some positives? What are some negatives of SBK? Well, one of the positives is, is that it's using surface air. We can measure this air. That's good. Another positive is, is that I think it can be pretty useful for tornado forecasting because higher levels of surface base instability can be a, a bit of a clue on, on tornadoes. However, there are some negatives as well. Uh, if you have a very long, uh, small layer of moisture, like it's very thin, it's like you get 200 or 2000 feet up and it's a desert up there, SB Cape's not gonna be very good because the storm's gonna be ingesting a lot of hot and dry air too, okay? So it's not always the best measurement because storms are ingesting more than just air parcels at the surface. They're ingesting parcels from the surface all the way up to the LCL and even beyond. Like storms are very dynamic. They're pulling in air from all directions. So this isn't always the best, but it is a way. And hey, if you wanna impress your friends and you wanna tell them, I chased a 6,500 Cape environment today, they won't know what you're talking about. But it will seem really sexy and cool, right? Okay, so this one, MLK, it's not as fun because the numbers oftentimes are not as high. In fact, they can sometimes be half of what surface base cape is showing. And that's because ML cape is averaging all the air parcels in the lowest part of the atmosphere, usually the lowest 100 millibars or so, which is just the area underneath the LCO generally. And that's taking that and averaging it out to get an instability number. This is going to be lower because the air does cool above the surface. But I think, this is just my opinion, this is usually more of a good index to use when storms are surface-based 
because when storms are surface based, they are pulling in more than just surface parcels. They're pulling in all that air. So this is going to tend to be more of an indication of what you're dealing with because oftentimes if you have that like shallow moisture layer and you have 6,000 surface base cape, but then you look at the updraft and it's pretty soft, that's probably because your moisture is shallow and your ML cape is probably more like 2,000. So ML cape is a really good measurement for that, but there are some drawbacks to using it. First off, I, and, and mostly, this is not a real air parcel. An air parcel is not that big, it's not that thick. So like how the thunderstorm is behaving isn't going to be a one-to-one -one match because this is a calculated, estimated value. It's not a real piece of air. It's an average, it's a guess, it's an estimation. I think though, that's, that's just the nature of the beast because you do not have measurements for every piece of air around the storm. So you do have to estimate in some way, but just so you know, that is a real drawback of ML cape versus even like surface base cape, just saying. Now, next up we have MU cape. This stands for most unstable cape. Why would you use this? Well, when the surface layer is completely capped, there's an, a huge inversion, the atmosphere is cooled off, or there's like a cold front, but it's still warm and moist above, MU cake comes in at that point because it's taking the most unstable air parcel it can find in the atmosphere and telling you how unstable that is. This is very helpful for days where you have zero surface based instability because the surface is literally stable but you still have thunderstorms. How is this happening? This is happening because that air above the surface is unstable. And the best way to see that, like on mesoanalysis or uh, modeling websites, something like that would be MU cape. That lets you see how unstable this air is above the surface, which then lets you know, can we get elevated severe thunderstorms today? So if, if you're wondering, like, can we get that, are severe thunderstorms possible tonight? Look at MU cape. Makes sense, right? And lastly, on our tour of capes, we have zero to three kilometer cape. I wanted to throw this one in here because I think it is the gold standard for looking for tornadoes. I think this is one of the biggest indexes I look at. Hey, I made a video about this. Again, cards happening right there. Check it out, five tornado hunting secrets because this is part of that. This is a measurement, zero to three kilometer cape, of how unstable the lowest three kilometers of the atmosphere are. Study after study has shown this is important. It's very important. In fact, you want to measure cape in this layer. And when you do that and you get these values that are 100, 200, 300, see, the, the numbers aren't high, so, so it's not as sexy as surface-based cape, to be sure. You tell somebody there's 6,500 surface base cape, their, their eyes might light up. That sounds big. You say, ah, but the, the three kilometer cape. Now that one's huge. It's 300 you have people. Yeah, yeah. But it's very important because this measures kind of, get, kind of gives you the idea of how much stretching potential there is in the lowest portion of the atmosphere. And when you know that, you know, can these storms actually produce tornadoes? It's really hard to get tornadoes when there's no low level instability, but when there's a lot, good things typically come to storm chasers who wait. And the, you're looking for that kind of instability in the lower levels for that. Now, a drawback or two, first off, this is not a good index to use for the entire atmosphere. 300, uh, zero to three kilometer instability, but 1000 total, well, this is gonna be a low cape kind of day, but those lower levels are gonna be quite unstable. So just so you know, just so you know, this is a great thing to use for tornadoes, but I don't typically use it for much else. Now, cape is not the only way to measure instability. So I do wanna mention a couple of different ways you can do it here and also include some tables so you can kind of see what you're looking for. First off, lifted index. This is typically taken, traditionally, the temperature difference between the air at 500 millibars and the air parcel at 500 millibars. And this difference taken in degrees Kelvin will let you know where you're at in terms of a lifted index. The higher, the more unstable. This is, a ver this is something that has been used a lot I think it is still very helpful. I don't think it's as good as Kate, but I think it is something that you could kind of refer to to kind of confirm we've got a lot of instability today. 
So the second one I want to talk about is the bulk Richardson number. This one is relating to two different things. It's taking vertical wind shear, vertical instability, and kind of taking those and spinning out a number. Short story version of this is you're looking for values 10 to 45 for supercells. Yet in between there, you're really dealing with supercells, you know, ideally in the middle for a well-balanced atmosphere. But hey, that's one way as well. Now, the last way. This one is, I think, way underused and also it could be very helpful in a lot of situations, especially for tornadoes toward evening as a low-level jet is cranking. It's theta E. Now, what is theta E? It is the equivalent potential temperature. There is so much that goes into this. I need to make a video about theta E for sure. But just know, the higher the temperature is, the more unstable the atmosphere is. This can be used in conjunction with other measurements. It can also be a way to kind of see what, what storms are ingesting, especially as the low level jet increases, etc. Again, I'm gonna have to do a whole video on this, but theta E is absolutely one way you can measure instability. It's one way I use in tandem with Kate. Hey everybody, that is it. That is, we're done. I, that was a lot though, wasn't it? Instability, it's a very complicated topic, I will admit. That was a very conceptual overview, not as practical and hands-on as I like to be typically in these videos. With that said, I'm about to throw up a couple of playlists at the end of this video. Go look at those. Those will start putting this into practice, okay? Now, next thing you need to do though. First, before we get there, subscribe. Just do it. We have so much more coming. Live storm chasing. Did I mention live storm chasing? It's coming. And finally, leave a comment. If you have a question, if you're wondering something, that's gonna help us, in, that's gonna inspire me in terms of where, what videos am I creating next? So please leave a comment, ask your questions. And then finally, weather's for everybody. And that includes you. Thank you for watching and we will see you next well, time. It's probably more like 2000. It happens. So I'm okay. We're just gonna keep going.